we have a guest in the back, so tell us what's going on here. Yes, indeed. Because, as you all know, uh, we are huge fans of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe here at Midnight's Edge. Uh, for Tom and myself, that was one of like the bonding things, because we both have our own stories with He-Man, as do many others. Now, a big part of my rediscovery of He-Man was actually a book that came out around 2009-2010, which was then the unofficial episode guide, which had an uh, unofficial episode guide, I should say, with emphasis on the D there, uh, that uh, curated every single episode described in interesting facts and trivia, air dates, everything, a detailed history of all things Masters of the Universe and she -Ra. And this was written by one James Hedock, which was the, when I first became familiar with him. Uh, this guy has been the curator of all things He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. I mean, He-Man would be in a far better state today if this guy was running all things He-Man. Some things, sometimes when officials don't do the job on their own, the fans have to do it. And James Etoch, or Serial Geek, as is his online name, has been doing what the officials should have been doing for more than 20 years now. And now he is curating a brand new Blu-ray release of the entire He-Man and She-Ra series, which was announced only yesterday. Uh, and this is a German special release from Plyon, uh, but it's going to be very English-friendly. Now, with us to talk more about both this release and his journey with all things, uh, things He-Man, it is my pleasure to welcome to Midnight's Edge, James Etock. How's it going? Hello, am I am I live? Can you hear me? You are can live. You, I'm live. You can hear me. There's no echo or anything. No, we're good. We're good. We are this good. good. Um, thank you for having me on. This is uh, very bizarre. As I said to you guys before, I, I've watched your channel for uh, many years, and then when we kind of communicated via Twitter, it's like, oh, you, you, you know, you mentioned you knew me. I was like, why? Why would you know me? <laughs> so I know you guys are He-Man fans, but I thought, you know, oh, okay, that was it. Was really. Um, yeah, a really quite lovely moment. <laughs> a little bit of background here, because I don't know how much you can actually say. So I'll try to, to phrase this as, as careful as possible. Um, you had started posting some pictures like the one I have here on the screen. Yeah. Because uh, you had been working uh, with these guys over at Plyon. Is that how you say it? Plyon? How do you say yeah, it, Andre? Plyon, Plyon. Uh, yeah. Plyon. It, used to, it used to be Koch Media. Koch yeah. Media, and, yeah. Yeah, and this is uh, this is how we first came on your radar, because we saw these pictures, and we were absolutely blown away, because that shouldn't be possible. Yeah. Well, not just that. <laughs> we'll get into that in a moment, because that's the thing, is you and I had a little bit of back and forth, and some people were misinterpreting it as an argument. But what it really was was a, a moment of discovery. Uh, cause, uh, we have been told by a few different places, or at least led to believe of this, we're going to call it an urban legend now. Oh, I guess Paul had to take off. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah, we had this, uh, this urban legend, uh, that the master tapes for He-Man and the masters of the universe were gone, lost, destroyed by a previous owner of all of that and we learned of this not from official sources but it did kind of like come from you as well so before we get to this release uh let's hear your story can you run us through uh your history with the he-man brand and everything that you have done for it deep breath <sighs> so um yeah i first like you know like anyone i was i was a fan of um he Man She were growing up as a kid, a uh, big Marvel Comics fan as well, um, which is why I was really fascinated with your uh, discussion about DC and how they've kind of completely uh, botched that whole cinematic universe. But um, yeah, so I was a big fan of He Man and She in 1980s cartoons in general, which is why when you guys were like, 
who's the voice actor of uh, Inspector Gadget? I'm like, Don Adams, Don Adams. <laughs> I'm shouting in the background crowd here. But um, yeah, I, I was really big into He-Man and She-Ra and all those shows. And, you know, in the 90s, I checked out. I was like, bah, cartoons are rubbish, you know, they're for kids. Even though I'd always had a, an appreciation of the process of making a, a cartoon, I was big into animating myself. I'd make Amiga A500 over here in the UK. I would animate away, doing the odd He-Man animation here and there. But for the most part, around about 93, 94, I kind of checked out of animation completely. However, like... Two years later, it was like uh, late, about October of 1995, my dad came home with uh, this connection to the internet. He's like, oh, you know, my dad had been on, you know, uh, downloading kind of uh, artwork and stuff from bulletin boards back then. And then he said, oh, there's this thing called the internet. And I just remember saying, oh, that's for weirdos and geeks. It's like this weird thing that's never going to be anything. And the first thing I ever searched for was this hip hop group. I was like, oh my God, they've got a website. They're like an underground hip hop group. They're really cool. They had merchandise, they had lyrics way ahead of their time. Um, so they had all this stuff. I was like, that's interesting. I wonder if anyone remembers this cartoon from the 80s. Typed in Hey Man, there was one website at the time. It's this guy, Kevin, Her he never forgets certain things. It was Kevin Herbert's website. And he just listed all the, the, the figures he had. And I was just like, oh, wow, someone else on this planet remembers He-Man and She-Ra. Amazing. Then by about late 1995, what became He-Man.org, it was this just random website run by a guy named Adam Tyner. And, uh, yeah, he, he had this website. And so, like, oh, let me, uh, does anyone remember this episode? And at the time, bear in mind, this is late 95. There's no official lists. There's no text there's nothing so it, you, you're kind of just working from memory so you're saying to people hey who remembers this episode and someone else says i remember this episode and you're kind of going back and forward then i had the opportunity to speak to people like um, larry larry dottilio the late great larry dottilio and i said to him you know how many episodes of he-man were there and he's like there was 130 and uh, and 65 of she-ra i was like oh wow that's uh we've only got like 78 episodes at the time so eventually, like this, this community over the next year builds and builds. And then one guy pops up and he's like, I've got all 128 episodes I recorded from the USA Network in 1989, 1990. It's like, oh, wow. So tape trading begins and the quality of the, I mean, it's so funny what, what we're heading towards, but the quality of the episodes back then, so bad at times, you know, and you would get tapes that were, what was it like? Not just standard play, not long play, but the American one, which is like um, super SLP, big, super SLP. long play. Oh my God, like I've still got the first tape I ever received from America. Um, and it's got, I want to say like 12 episodes of He-Man on with ad breaks and everything. It's not as bad as you think quality-wise, but it's so funny because that to me was almost like a holy grail at the time. I was like, oh my God, I'm seeing these episodes, some of which I'd never seen before because in the way the episodes had been shown in the UK, we'd had one run and bear in mind, really broken right. up into bits and pieces. And then one batch of repeats that was it unless you had satellite which back in the late 80s early 90s many people didn't so seeing some of these episodes for the first time and slowly but surely i kind of cultivated all this information got to speak to more people uh, like robert lamb and even straczynski briefly uh, you know a lot of these people that worked on he man ashira dini paul dini um, never spoke to bruce tim but uh, yeah spoke to all these people and just started accumulating all this information and then well, I kind of, you know, it's the again, it's the internet is such a different place to what it, you know, was. So, he created a website. Uh, my, my friend, uh, this guy I barely knew, suggested, why don't we review He Man and She episodes and call it the He Man and She episode review website? I was like, oh, I said, I hate writing, writing sucks. <laughs> and he was like, no, no, he goes, I think you'll enjoy it. And he was trying to, he was at Harvard. What was his thing? He was in the same English literature class as Natalie Portman. It's really bizarre. I was like, what? Um, he's now a TV executive, so our careers took very different paths. I, I stuck with the He-Man thing, good for me, and um, he's now a TV exec. Uh, we still communicate and stuff, but um, he convinced me to do this website. We did this website, and it, it kind of took off in a time when websites, you know, were very kind of very specific niche things. Like, I think at one point I had a GeoCities page. Who even thinks about GeoCities these days? And... Um, yeah, I built up all this information. And then what happened was when Mattel relaunched He-Man in 2002, they did the um, 
a, re, a relaunch which so many people forget about, which is <laughs> including Mattel, which is quite sad. Um, so they relaunched it and they relaunched it with an animated series. So what they did was Mattel got in touch, a guy called Ian Richter from Mattel, got in touch and said to Zadok and me, my co-writer on the He-Man and She-Ra episode of your website, and said, do you guys want to like create um, a series Bible as such so that the writers of the new show can pull from it and go like, oh, we need to write about Count Marzo or Evil Seed or this character or that character. So, OK. So we wrote episode synopses, character guides. It was all done. In, I've still got the, the website, as it were. It was all done in HTML. We sent it off to Mattel. To my knowledge, they were still using it. This is what I understood from what I heard in the on the grapevine. They were still using it when it came, came to writing the classics bios, or at least the earliest days of the classic bios, because there were some misspellings that they were using that could have only come from our you know, uh, research at the time. So we didn't have the scripts at the time either. That would come I have to stop you there for one second yeah, sure. just to emphasize how special that is. Because for those that haven't seen it, the 2002 reboot of Masters of the Universe is one of the best reboots at all time. Easily. And the people, the people that were behind it, they actually reached out to you yeah. because they realized you know this stuff better than they did. And they were humble enough to realize and go to where the expertise was rather than to try to subvert it because they wanted to get it right. How much better would we be in our entertainment landscape today if more people would do what Mike Young Productions did at the time? I just yes. want to emphasize that because that, to me, is so special. They recognized then, here is someone who knows this stuff better than, than we do. If there is anyone who is kind of like the, what should we call it, the the keeper of the He-Man legend. It's you. <laughs> what an honor. The real <laughs> keeper of the lore. Yeah. As it were. But it's that thing, like what you point out, like I always say that, and I know this is so far-fetched, but if someone said to me, James Etock, you're writing, um, you're the showrunner for a new Ninja Turtles cartoon. The first thing I do is I go on the Technodrome forums, I go on the Ninja, uh, Ninja Turtles, every kind of fan resource, and I, I try and scout who are the experts or who will benefit. That would be the first thing I do. I won't be like, well, I can write this stuff because I remember that, that cartoon in the 80s. The Turtles were all silly and they, they threw sewer covers at each other and went waka waka. It's like, yeah, then you watch the first five episodes of Ninja Turtles and go, oh, they were, they were quite, it's quite a violent cartoon. But it's it's that thing of yeah I mean I mean this is a, an entirely different discussion but yeah when they reached out it was it was at a time when you know reboots were just happening like Transformers hadn't had a I don't think it even had a reboot at that point had it oh yeah, Beast Wars of course but Beast Wars when you go back to that ninety six ninety seven and ninety eight Beast Wars Larry Dottilio and Bob Ford became part of the trans I used to be part of the Transformers community. Um, I was primarily the UK comics guy. I would sell UK comics. Pretty good business in the in the late 90s. And Larry Dottilio and Bob Ford, who obviously worked on He-Man and She-Ra and many other cartoons, they worked with the community in a way. Don't get me wrong, they, they had their structure. They knew what they were doing, but they looked to the community for feedback. And sometimes, you know, early days of the internet again, sometimes there were people who were just trolling or whatever. But most of the time, they were they got into a good sense of community and then when they had i think it was like botcon 98 larry larry de and bob ford attended and yeah the fans loved him and you know larry's no longer with us but i think he's still heralded as like one of the great transformers writers like simon Furman and numerous others but yeah it's um it's it seems so bizarre now that a company would reach out to fans but at the same time you think surely in that position you would i don't know like i you know, I know what we're getting at. It's um, uh, Kevin well, Smith with, with Revelation. I'm not, like, I'm not completely like surprised on that note because hmm. that's kind of what got us here, right? Like, is to get back to what I was saying before. Yeah. Uh, and again, thank you to Paul Chato. We didn't we didn't know he had to leave. We were gonna we would have given him a much more elaborate outing. Uh, uh, but do check out Call Me Chato, and uh, we'll we'll get back to to plugging his channel again later. And uh, hopefully, if he doesn't make it back here for any super chats we had left over, we'll get to them Friday. But I will t say this, like, because you and I started talking on Twitter because you started posting these pictures, like I had up before. And the big thing is is 
Filmation, when they when He Man was sold off, they sold a bunch of properties off together to two different. Like we've gone over this a couple times, it went through all kinds of places. So it's I'm not surprised that they would need somebody who is you know who knows this stuff because at this point we've had so many companies what i'm trying to say is we've had so many companies that have uh worked with the, the property now that had no care love or even the 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 knowledge to to keep these shows together to know what they were all about how important they were to a lot of people because the names you mentioned up front are are good reason why these shows should be technically preserved right and that was our big question because we had heard that these the masters for these were destroyed um and you have said you've seen them with your own eyes or at least uh something to that effect so i'm gonna yeah. let you speak for yourself yeah yeah let's uh, let's run through that first the story of how the masters were destroyed and uh then how did it pop up again well so yeah as, as you were kind of saying like um the you know uh L'Oreal, the uh, <laughs> the makeup company, bought yeah. the Filmation Library in 1989. It was Westinghouse who were owned Filmation said, we're going to sell you. Well, everybody always makes the mistake, oh, Lou Scheiner made this decision to sell Filmation to L'Oreal. It's like, no, it was Westinghouse's decision. They owned it and said, we're going to sell you because you're not making. Because Filmation had made so much money with He-Man, She-Ra, uh, and the, the pinnacle of the mid-80s. But then they found it harder and harder to sell shows. Like Brave Star flopped, unfortunately. Filmation's Ghostbusters obviously was no real Ghostbusters. And yeah, and then Filmation ended up still producing content, but it just wasn't really connecting. Uh, with yeah, the, with probably the their only other biggest success would be Star Trek. And of course, that was owned by Paramount, I would imagine. Yeah, so there course, you go. Yeah. It's a great example. Yeah. And, and then basically, yeah, so they, they, they the library was bought, you know, everyone, sorry, Filmation was bought and then everyone was fired within the same day. It was ridiculous. Like it's, it's a fascinating, tragic story. Because um, I know numerous people that were at, at Filmation that day and they said they literally came in and said, you've got two hours to leave, we're closing. It's like, what? You know, my family's out here in Los Angeles, uh, my life, my, you know, da-da-da. But it's just the way it is with, you know, corporations. So basically the library went to... Um, L'Oreal, then it went to, then Hallmark, I believe. I, I can't remember the exact uh, stages, but Hallmark bought it around about 94, 95. And Hallmark decided that they would uh, take all the reels, the master reels, and convert them into, uh, like, restore them, remaster them, and make them uh, available to the European market. So therefore, they turned them all into PAL, which, mean, which meant two things. One, you had a higher image definition because you do with PAL. PAL has a much higher definition than NTSC. So that's possibly one reason that they did all this in PAL. But the second thing is the speed was affected, and that was the downside. Suddenly, He-Man went from saying, like, by the power of grace, God, uh, by the power, it was slightly, you know. But, and that's the funny thing. Growing up in the UK, we were so used to that. So when the internet came along, the tape trading started to happen back in, like, the late 90s. It was like, oh, hang on a second. American speed, I think that's the correct speed. <laughs> so there's all this realization. Anyway, Hallmark have all these things. And the rumor kind of I don't I don't know when it started, but it was just like, oh, the all the masters have been destroyed. So oh that well, that sucks. But in my was, research, the best we can find is some forums and Yeah. Uh there was a I don't know if it was just a if there was somebody who was actually trustworthy that had spouted it at some point because it took on a life of its own. Let's say yeah. it became one of those urban legends. And at some point it just became true, you know? Yeah, I, <laughs> and that's the thing. I, I, I won't, I won't lie. I probably was just, I probably said it numerous times myself as in, Oh yeah, the masters are probably like either destroyed or probably destroyed. I'm not going to know exactly what I said because I've been on the internet a long time, but yeah, the, it was, and the attitude was, well, we've got DVD now. It's the perfect format. And you know, those, um, those UK DVDs, the first uh, nine volumes that came out, were PAL quality, and they were spectacular, well, spectacular, but they were great looking. I was like, wow. Um, and then what happened was, that was in 2003, 2004. Then 2000, bear in mind, I've worked on pretty much every DVD box set from 2003 until like now with the Blu-ray right. set. And what happened in uh, 2004, 2005 is that BCI acquired the rights to... Do he managed Shira and all the formation shows to on release the, the shows? Yeah, yeah, on DVD. 
but and I don't blame BCI for this. I don't know if the fault lies with them, but I think primarily with um, entertainment rights, bought the Filmation Library around about 2004, I think it was. And what entertainment rights did was convert a lot of the PAL library back into NTSC, right? So the Hallmark Digital Masters, they're over here. Now, entertainment rights go, well, we're expanding to the American market, so we're going to turn them into NTSC. Instead of slowing them down, which I know it sounds bizarre, it's, it's really hard to explain, but it doesn't necessarily affect the frame rate. They used a, a technique called interpolation. So what that did was it kept the play speed at PAL, so you had the voices, but it also was like a son of a bitch when it comes to frame ghosting. So if you go back and look at those BCI DVDs, anytime there's a camera pan, it's kind right. of doing this. It's really the jagged edges. Yeah. Jagged edges. That's something else that that that, that was present in BCI, not as bad as <laughs> what happened a few years later, because BCI do their DVDs and obviously BCI's DVDs are, are mainly celebrated for the presentation. You know, they interviewed all these people, Paul Dini, Straczynski, Tilio, Lou Scheiman, um, anybody and everybody they could, they interviewed. Andy Mangles was the um, producer on those DVDs. I worked on a few of them. Actually, I worked on all of them. But, yeah, we, we, we put a lot of work into those sets. Like, people from the community, that's the thing. Here we go back to what we were talking about before. You had uh, Val Staples, Emiliano Santa Lucia, myself, Alessandro Fucaria, um, trying to think so many people from the fan community working on these sets because guess what? We knew our shit. <laughs> it's simple as that. And BCI weren't were humble enough to go, get on board, guys. You know, <laughs> you, you'll you'll do okay out of this. And um, yeah, like I mean, they primarily hired Val Staples with MV Creations, and then he subsequently hired everybody else. So yeah, we were we were off to the races. BCI sets come out, everybody loves them. Um, and then what happens is a few years after, I think BCI closed down, they become Mill Creek. Mill Creek released their DVDs, like a budget version. Same quality yeah, episodes. Highly compressed versions. Highly yeah. compressed, but same same quality in terms of um, what you were looking at. But yeah, definitely highly compressed. Now, like, so many episodes we can get on this disc. Get on one like, disc. And that's what Mill Creek is known for. In fact, yeah. not to derail too much, we actually have an ongoing joke with Mill Creek. But anyhow... Uh, yeah, so that was the thing. Is this the, the shows have been released a couple times? That would be the second release, so it was compromised then, for that release. Yeah, but and then, then it gets worse because then I, it gets I, worse. Yeah, this is hard. I, I hate saying this because like people have employed me these companies, but you yeah. can't run from the facts. And, well, maybe we should be upfront that they're only at the basically the mercy of whatever they're given. Yeah, of from, course. Yeah. So let's like, be clear about that right there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So the next, what happens next is that um classic media take over the 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 brand who then become dreamworks classic the dreamworks by classic media they become dreamworks classic during this time yeah. the episodes have changed again and what happens is they're they're turned back to pal <laughs> it's such a mess so basically now pal. we have gone from pal to ntsc and then back to PAL again. Pal, yeah. And this is the same master, or not the same master, but it's the same transfer yeah. that just gets mucked with more yeah, and people, more people, and more. I think people don't quite understand that. They think, oh, it's digital, so all you've got to do is just take that and that. It's like, no, it's kind of the same as VHS. You know, the more you kind of, well, no, tell a lie. You could keep encoding something so long as you keep an eye on bit rates and fields and stuff like that, you're fine. If you start screwing with that stuff, or if you don't know what you're doing, you screw it up. And so what happened was the next set of masters I saw were when I was working on the official He-Man YouTube channel. Yes, that was a thing, kids. There was a He-Man, uh, it's still there, but I worked on it for about three or four years. Really, really fun channel to work on. Worked for a guy called Neil Allen, who was kind of like a freelancer, but re really, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was a good, good camaraderie and stuff. And... Um, this ties into the uh, story about the masters as well. So he, um, I, I get all the episodes on like this big chunky hard drive. Each episode is nine gigabytes, and I'm thinking these are going to look gorgeous. And I start watching them, I'm like, oh no! And they've all got field issues. And I, even as far back as when this happened, like 2012, 2013, I took a screen comparison, one from the old UK Contender DVDs from 2003, and one from this, you know. Um, a classic media encode of you know the the most recent one the nine gigabyte file 
and it was the Prince Adam just about to turn into He-Man and I put them next to each other and you know top and bottom of the image was slightly cropped you had um, the jagged lines which are field issues for those that don't, you know basically field issues are how the image is interpreted and basically what happens is you're going to end up with ghosting if you do it wrong so the he the, the classic media episodes have field issues, so jagged lines, but also Prince Adam's taking out the sword. The next frame is already in shot, but it's like a ghost, so you can see the outline. Right. And so when I was editing together videos for the YouTube channel, I'd always have to cut shots a frame early or a frame late, so I didn't catch the ghosting of the next frame. It was very frustrating. And so, so you think that's the end of that adventure. Then the next thing that happens is NBC uh universal get in touch or universal get in touch in uh, with me in, i think it was like beginning of 20 yeah it was before the pandemic 2019 um really friendly communication they said we're releasing this do you want to um i forget what my involvement was oh i had to check the order of episodes and they wanted me to write some text and i said well actually i've, <laughs> I've just done a book uh, for dark horse so they pulled some text from that to use in the dvd so i actually got a, a, a name check and i was like okay but those episodes, I saw people online complaining. I was like, what are you complaining about? It's probably just like just as good as the BCI. Started watching the Universal episodes and I was like, oh God, these, I, and this, I'm, I'm not shitting. People expect me to shit on NBC Universal because of another thing that happened. But they are just so bad. The, the quality of these is so bad. And people fail to understand. It's like, you know, all these, it's like, you, you, just look at some of the comparison images. I, that one you showed of Prince Adam in the three shots. You've got a DVD, a PAL DVD from 2003. You've got the Universal release from 2019 next to it. How is it that bad when you look? There's just no detail. It loses all clarity. There's ghost frames. There's um, uh, like noise reduction. So frames it, like become part of one another. It's really bad. And people think I'm, I'm crapping on Universal. It's like, I'm really not. I want every no, I don't know them. what they did because there's also other issues. Uh, aspect ratio? Yeah, they fucked with the aspect ratio somehow. I don't know if that happened somewhere in the processing of the file yes. or what happened somewhere. But yeah, some some are like squished. And I think some are not only squished, but they're cropped. I can't remember exactly. Some people, I didn't buy it. Uh, luckily, I have uh, an older set and then Andre sent me. Uh, a better version of basically, I think they're the BCI. Rips, yeah, that's right? the BCI. It's the BCI. Of course, we're going to. Yeah. So it's not illegal. I already own them. Best anyway. in existence, so that's the BCI. <laughs> it's just it's a shame because you know people go. You know, I'm sure there's plenty of people in the chat who said, "Oh, it's a crappy 1980s cartoon." Blah blah blah. And it's like, yeah, but regardless of your opinion, it's still a piece of history. Animation, I think, should always be preserved from the most basic of animation, you know, to the most beautiful studio ghibli animation everything should be preserved to its best quality because if someone looks at that middle frame and goes wow they really shot these episodes badly it's like no no that's a digital encode that's that's a release from the current owners of the license that's that's universal own he-man and she-ra the cartoons that's the dvd they put out on the left of that you know we see the contender dvd a, U, a small uk company that were just in charge of putting out the first season of He-Man on DVD. And because it's PAL, it's a higher quality. BCI, slightly less quality, but still good. But then you go all the way over to the right, which is the most, you know, which is what the German uh, company have been doing. And it's like, oh, yeah, this it's is night and day. Doing. Yeah, it's... And I don't know how much you can talk about it because yeah. uh, uh, we just, we, to go back to what how we first got talking real quick, and, and, and again, I'm going to let you take most of this because I don't know That's what fair. you can and cannot say. Um, but because our big thing was, wait a minute, so you're telling us that there are reels or at least something that can be used as a high-definition master, but there were there was also, because uh, 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 I was like, where where are you getting these from? There's no way... This can be coming from the old DVDs, or at least those old masters. And, and again, there could be a process to it that I don't understand, but mm. you would explain that to me. But you had actually seen these masters, and that's where I just want to make sure that that people realize that they, they're not destroyed. You've seen them, but you said they were separated in different places. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Well, I'll just talk like the history of the warehouse or the warehouse. Yes, is. yes. That's what I was saying. I don't know how much you can talk about it. But no, yeah. it's, it's fine. I'll happily. Uh, so I was fortunate enough back in uh, the late, well, 
2001, uh, a friend of mine got, well, a guy got in touch, a guy called Lee Clevenger, and said, I have access, he was friends with Lou Scheim, he said, I have access to the Filmation Warehouse in Los Angeles. And, you know, back in the late 90s, I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm sure you do, mate. And he did, like, because he said, you know, send me some images, some frame screen captures of cells you want, and I'll see if I can find them. So I was like, okay, send him like a cell from Sweet Bee's home, a cell from The Problem With Power. So, And he basically said, there you go. And he sent it to me. I was like, oh my God. Like, and he sent it to me for free because he's a really great dude. But I was like, wow, you, you have access to the warehouse. So I go over in 2001. And this is, so basically people sometimes get confused. They think that the, the like Hallmark owned all the animation art and everything. It's like, no, no, no. All the animation art was in a warehouse. That was technically still Filmation, you know, Filmation still owned that. But Lou Scheimer sold it all to a guy called Herman Rush. Now, Herman Rush was like a, an art dealer, you know, and around about 95, 96, he created like an offshoot company called Sunday Funnies. And they had a website in the late 90s and they would sell very expensive He-Man and She-Ra sales. You're looking at like $300 a sale. It was like, whew, for like, and there was some shady tactics. So I won't go into it too much, but it was like, if anyone's ever bought any animation art and you've got a sale of He-Man, like, or you've got a background of He-Man like this, but his head's the cell, and this this is a, a laser copy on the background. That's Sunday Funnies. That was them at their worst. They, they were doing like, you know, people would, He-Man sell for sale. People would buy and be like, it's just a head. It's like, yeah, you got duped. So this uh, this warehouse I went to in 2001, you see all, it's, uh, it's hard to put into words. I, I, sh I shot some, you can find it on my feed somewhere on Instagram, all like, 2001 video footage like undercover camcorder footage me walking around the warehouse for all of about 30 40 seconds it's very quick because obviously you're not supposed to film in there but i thought never going to get a chance to film this stuff again and you would literally say to yourself you know you know the list of episodes right now it's like oh i know that episode 83 is into the abyss or episode uh you know 73 is origin of the sorceress or 37 is it's not my fault <laughs> so you go you know that in your mind so you go to a box they're all in order and you pull out one box there's usually about two or three per episode and again people think oh filmation just had a stock library and we're just you no 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 every episode there was so much new animation it's part of the reason filmation bought it in the end because they you know couldn't ship work they didn't want to ship work overseas and yeah you know that's the end of that story so you go through these boxes and every scene's in order and it's all pristine beautiful and there's there's parts of this warehouse that they wouldn't let you go to it's like I want to go in this warehouse. I want to see what, you know, what's behind that door. And they're like, oh, that's, you know, certain things are in there. And this is the first time where I thought, I wonder if the reels are in here. Because even though Hallmark had, you know, apparently digitized them and dumped them, I thought, I wonder if there are like reels here. And I know for a fact, Lou Scheim had all digi betas of every episode because I saw them in his house. I went to Lou Scheim's house. Uh, oh God, when was that? 2008. And he had this room and there was just like all these tapes, even like of shows that hadn't come out. That was a really tragic thing. All these like Bravo was a cartoon and Bugsburg, like digis of all these unproduced series or unaired series. It's like, damn, that stuff would be like gold dust now. But um, yeah, so in this warehouse, go there in 2001, revisit there in 2005. And then in around about 2012, I think it was 2011, 2012, the warehouse moves to San Diego. During that time, a bunch of She-Ra artwork is damaged. So people sometimes go, why are my She-Ra cells going all warped? And it's like they were damaged en route to San Francisco, unfortunately. Then the next part of this story, working on the official he and She-Ra YouTube channel in 2014. And they said, we've got we've got a bunch of, they called them lobby cards. <laughs> we've got a bunch of lobby cards in this warehouse just outside of London. Do you want to take a look? And I was like, all right. So go out to this warehouse and... Uh, they just bring out these boxes. And I was like, these are these are the boxes from the warehouse in San Diego that used to be in Los Angeles. They were like, oh, right. So what's in them? I was like, this is these are animation cells. So I'm going through them. It's like, they had about 30 or 40 boxes. And I said, uh, I said, what else have you got? And they said, well, we've got a, like such an, and I don't, I don't blame them. It's just the way these things are housed. And, you know, to us fans, we're like, you've got the He-Man Masters. To the person in the warehouse or the person in charge of this spreadsheet, it's just a, ta or a tape or a reel or whatever, right? That's the problem, you know, it's, it's hard to get across to fans sometimes. Like, you know, we put so much value on these. 
but uh, NBC Universal is just an IP and one that probably doesn't make that much money to be honest. So yeah, I go I go to look at this very archaic spreadsheet and like you know t -t type in He Man and it came up He Man like Master Tape Stroke Real and I was like what the hell and they brought out one um, tape and like I was like oh my god. I was like, what? And it says, like, not for air and all this stuff on it. And I was like, how many of these you got? And they're like, we're not sure. I was like, what? And then you end up searching on this system for He-Man, He-Man with a dash, He-Man as one word, <laughs> misspell it, Hi-Man, <laughs> you know, all these different terms. And it's just like, yep, they're all matching. But it's, in a word, to my knowledge, they're all still at this warehouse owned by DreamWorks Classic, outside of London, and, but I don't know if they've been shipped since, and I don't know if there were more than the ones there. There might be a bunch in the warehouse in San Diego, although all that material has gone to a warehouse now in Anaheim, I think, the last time I knew where that was. Mm. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of these things. It's, I, I'd love, hopefully, one day for someone in charge, higher up, to go, we found them, they're right here. <laughs> okay, let's go. But, so basically what we can say is they do likely exist. Yes. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> so saying. that's that's one thing we can say because that is kind of news, right? Like that that is something we we cannot express enough is the fact that these are not destroyed. We have visual confirmation from somebody who is very close to them, which is you, James, and, and yeah, Andre. I mean, that that this is something we've been kind of sitting on for a while. <laughs> when we learned of this, I mean, we were so happy because we thought <laughs> that this was lost we all genuinely believed that this story from the boards back in 2005 or something which was when the story was that hallmark basically burned all of the original masters <laughs> out of essentially sheer spike to malice in addition to some uh, to some uh, space saving measures and it was going to say i can believe the space it's mass burning in the back backyard somewhere <laughs> well and there is uh, there is a reason to believe this because uh, there is an actual story that's connected to this because they also had the laurel and hardy films oh and somebody found out that they were going to destroy them as soon as they were done with the scanning. So somebody went down there who was a, a historian. I can't remember the gentleman's name. I actually found the story because I found this when I talked to you to, and I remember bringing this up because he went down there and he saved it all. He saved everything he could so that that's how now we actually have these 4k masters out there of Laurel and Hardy because of this person. Yeah. And and that's why there is a precedent to believe that they could have destroyed the masters for He-Man if somebody hadn't come and saved them. But maybe due to some stupidity, because it, you know whatever, they're shipped but around the here and there in different that places. They were was a little bit too too likely or too too wrong too true to just dismiss outright. Yeah, that. exactly. Yeah. So at this point, it sounds more likely, and this is just me speculating, and I'm, I'm curious to see if you think this is true, James. They were shipped out as soon as they were done with them, but they got shipped to different places under different assumptions of what they actually were. Because it yeah. sounds like that's the case with your lobby card story, for instance. Oh, yeah, like the fact that all these boxes of animation are ended up under the ownership of classic media who are like, we don't know what these are. And I'm like, You've got like 30 something boxes of animation art. There were a lot of the earlier episodes, like Dawn of Dragoon, Quest for He Man, Royal Cousin, Creatures of the Task Swamp, all these earlier episodes. So like these should all be in the, these, sh these should all be with the material in the warehouse in um, San Diego, as it was at the time. But I think what happened, and I'm, ugh, I may be completely mistaken here, was when I spoke to the guy from the San Diego warehouse, because he and I were friends as well. And he said, Yeah, I got like, this company contacted me and said, we own He-Man and She-Ra now. Can you send us what you have? And he was just like, to his mate, you know, to one of the people in the warehouse, send them 30 boxes and a bunch of stuff we've got in the in the back of the warehouse. And I'm like, yeah, sure. So, you know, I, it's, it's so frustrating. Like I always say, and I'm sorry, this might be going for a slight tangent. That's what I do. But there was a time when you could walk into that warehouse. And I've said before, if I was running that warehouse, this sounds arrogant, but it's not because I've, I've sold animation art for like the last 20 years, purchased it and bought it as well, collected it, of course. But I think I could have made millions selling the filmation, He-Man and she animation art. Unfortunately, when it went to the, the ownership of um, the guy in San Diego, I think I told you this guys before, but we had a brief little chat, what he did, <laughs> Um, these gorgeous pan backgrounds, like 
long pan backgrounds, which I saw two sell for recently on heritage auctions for $13,000 each, two, like 13,000, 13,000. What he would do with these beautifully painted pan backgrounds, because people can fool Filmation's animation. This made me off. cry when you told me this, sorry. <laughs> but, those, but Filmation's backgrounds, I think even the most cynical person will be like, oh no, their backgrounds were really kind of ethereal and fantasy based and beautiful. And this guy in the warehouse in San Diego, in order to make money, took a pan background, a giant guillotine, and would just go chukunk, chukunk, chukunk. And so I, because I first found this out, I ordered one background. I was like, oh my God, you're selling that. I've been after that background, The Plains of Perpetua, from um, the episode Song of Solis. I was like, I really want that background. And it arrived, and I was like, okay, there it is. And then I watched the episode back, and I was like, there's like a, there's like a chunk missing off the end. And then I realized you could see where it had been guillotined. I was like, oh no. And then when I went to the warehouse the next time, uh, he had the warehouse, but he also had like a loads of artwork in his, he had a big house. <laughs> he's, he's an art dealer. He had a big house and he had this, this section where it was all like He-Man and She-Ra cells and all these pan backgrounds and a guillotine. And I was like, I was like, please, please stop chopping artwork. And he would joke about it. He's like, oh, I might chop this. And I was like, please, please don't chop these backgrounds. He didn't get for that. For, for example, that one, he didn't get his hands on. I know. Yeah, this one is my, one of the few that's still in existence. Yeah. One of my friends got into the warehouse. Like I said, my friend Lee Clevenger back in the day got into the warehouse and he was spending five to $600 on these pan backgrounds and managed to get. So he's got the iconic castle grayskull up shot from the it's the daytime one because the nighttime one is uh long gone somewhere but um yeah he rescued a bunch but you know that that kind of i'm, I'm not the guy from san diego the, the san diego warehouse really really f lovely guy actually but it just shows that these in the hands of the wrong people in the hands of the wrong people yeah this this history whether it be animation whether it be master tapes reels whatever even like digital encodes could end up like in really bad ways. Like to, to think that these beautifully painted backgrounds are just chopped up into fours, sold for like $20 each when this guy could have sat on them and sold them for like five to $10,000 each if he'd held onto them better. Well, you're not yeah, wrong because like yeah, I just brought to Andre's attention they're having probably one of the biggest uh, memorabilia sales in God, maybe a decade or more. Basically the last time since Superman's you, the, the Christopher Reeve Superman costume went up for sale. It's going up for sale again. So a bunch of stuff is up for sale. You're right. I've seen some of the, the stuff they have on uh, in a lot of the uh, cell animation cells and stuff they have in there. They're in that higher range. Like, I can't believe some of the prices on some of this stuff and how much well, it's gone it's like up in the last my, few years. Yeah. My, my nest egg is I've got a cell from He Man saying, I have the power. I've got that cell where he lowers it and the, the key frame where he's, he's got it out in wow. front. It's like, that's, that's one. I've got like the. I've got the original line art of the He Man logo from the intro. Wow. So much, it's like at some point you think, well, I'm kind of broke these days. Maybe I should start selling the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, I've sold loads of stuff over the years, but the collector in me, the animation art, the lover of the process of animation art, the lover of filmation, you know, I, I love that studio and what they did. Um, don't get me wrong, people, people think I'm blind to it or that my love of He Man is just filmation. It's like, uh, that's the thing. The, the the arguments I've gotten into with people about, oh, you don't like, you know, you only like Filmation's team. And I said, no, I love the seven Mark Texera mini comics that were packaged with, I guess, the second wave of figures. You had the first four, the Alfredo Alcala mini comics, mm. which are gorgeous. Then you had the next seven, these Mark Texera mini comics. They were written by Gary Conn. I don't know if I'm mispronouncing his surname, but those. So Andre comics, would know this better than me, but yeah. But the mini, those mini comics are just fantastic so yeah, so good amazing but, stuff yeah just to, to like the the, the the magic stealer and the power of point dread all these really cool mini comics and yeah just um I, I that's why i love the masters of the universe because it's so you know you can you don't have to go this is my thing you can go like oh at least with the vintage stuff you can go i oh, like this like, so, hey i like the new adventures of he-man i understand why people dislike that show yeah. so much he-man in spandex and skeletal with <laughs> googly eyes but there is sounded some, like Jackie Mason and all. <laughs> it's um it's a unique show, but um yeah. So uh, we come to like I guess this point in time where um, a German fan, a guy called Mark Knobloch, he um he's like proper big into the kind of 
German side of filmation, like what they released over there on VHS, big collector. And he messaged me and he said, um, this was like, I think earlier this year. And he said, oh, this, uh, this company are looking to release the Blu-ray. Can I put you in touch with them? I was like, okay, I think that's how it went. Apologies if it, it didn't go, but it was, it was something like that. I was like, okay, they got in touch and they showed me like f about 20 seconds from a, from the Christmas special, the He-Man and Shira Christmas special. And I was like, the quality is amazing, but there was an issue. The frame rate was, it had it been, it been corrected to NTSC, but the frames were doing this. Every like, I was like, that's not good. And I messaged back and then I didn't hear anything for like a good few weeks or something. And I thought, I thought, oh, whatever. You know, I kind of, it sounds terrible. I kind of like, oh, you know, do your thing. Then we kind of re-communicated, I forget how. And it became a lot more like, this is what we're doing. Here's some more examples. Download the first disc, take a look at what you think. And I was just like, that's when, you know, I was like, oh my goodness, you know, the quality of the episodes I was seeing. And I said to them, how have you done this? And they said, we've just basically taken the best digital encode. So like the Hallmark Masters, I think there might've been some others about as well. This is why, you know, you guys were saying, surely there's some reels involved here. And I was like, either, I, I, I don't believe there are, but there's the quality of them. It's like, how do you have upscaling technology that brings out that much detail? But then I will, the only thing I will say is that the PAL Hallmark Masters, obviously when they're lossless, so when they're not encoded, would look pretty pristine. So like, I think number two on this skeletal thing, number two is the Contender release. So that's obviously a digital encode. Like it's possible. Very, and we, we debated this and we, yeah. you can't give me a definitive answer. And even no. if you could, I don't know if you could, no, let's say, <laughs> and let, let's just say this much. We don't want to, we don't want to, uh, debate it too much. I will say this. There's things that I've noticed with coloring, with brush strokes and other oh, things that strokes. I've seen yeah. that there's no effing way, no matter what you had prior to that, considering the quality that you could pull that out with any kind of AI, but you know what? I'm not going to question it because <laughs> I, I'm not going to even feed into why I'm not going to question it for various reasons. And Andre understands what I'm saying. And you already understand what I'm saying from our conversation. Yeah, Hopefully yeah. people can read into that a little bit out there. I'm not going to, I'm not going to get into it too much, but this, you don't understand when you were posting these pictures, I'm just beside myself because I've seen scans of the cells. I've seen the imperfections that are there. Yeah. I'm seeing those imperfections in this. And I'm like, well, yeah, wait till we see it in motion. Then I can see what you're saying, perhaps. Cause you did say there is some times where you can see certain things that may. Well, yeah. This is why I think that most of the episodes have been pulled from the Hallmark masters because you still get that what they call oh god someone's going to be shouting me in the comments but you saw i don't blocking know, no it's not blocking it's the 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 technique they would use foolishly on certain box sets when they remastered episodes they used it on the 1967 spider-man series where you remaster edge you, enhancement edge enhancement maybe no i think it's noise reduction and what it noise does reduction it loses the color or it blocks out color so on when, for example, when the camera pans up to print, uh, Prince Adam's the Sword of Power when he's holding it, when that camera pans up, you'll notice that the frames aren't perfect. But it sounds weird. It sounds like I'm, I'm but they are, you know, they, they're still great. And it's a pan move. So you don't really notice it. You yeah. notice on certain things, but uh, it's really hard to, exp I've had people say like, oh, I've seen the episodes on Amazon Prime and they're, they're HD. And it's like, if you think they're HD, you have no idea. Like, yeah. This, what you said, brush strokes, that's the key to everything. Like I those contender DVDs, I would I still do shout. Best best version of He-Man on DVD, quality wise, at least the first season. When I got you, you saw that image from the Dragon Invasion of like He-Man and I kind of zoomed it in. And you should see the brush strokes on the background. The amount of detail I'm noticing for the first time and the imperfections. Right? Exactly. Yeah it's it's ridiculous it's you know things that when they painted this tiny cell of taylor with a giant sea creature back all like leaning over her you weren't supposed to see taylor in detail you blow that image up now you're like oh they miscolored her tunic <laughs> you know stupid stuff like that or oh yeah you can see how they just went well this is a small image it's going to be 
this big on the screen you know no one's going to see it so we'll just kind of and obviously a tiny little drawing they're not going to do too much detail now you can see that you can see like the coloring errors and stuff like that i'm not saying the series is ridden with errors but it's it's no. so funny now to watch these episodes that i've watched for nigh on 40 years ago oh wow that or i never noticed that, make out that text yeah. now and you know there's my favorite there's um, one of my favorite uh, gags, which you could never pick up on the VHS. You can just about notice it on the UK DVD. But I own, of course, the artwork for it. And it's a map that King R Randall's reading in the episode Prince Out of No More. And you see it on screen for about five seconds. No, three or four seconds of, of that. And it's this map. And it's got all these locations on. And it's like one is um, uh, Joan Rivers. So there's that. <laughs> there's there's like uh, Bad Mountains. Um, there's all these like in-jokes like... Her, her Chenchen Lake, which is an artist, Wes Herchenchen. There was Rolnick River. Sharon Rolnick was a storyboard artist on He-Man. All these little gangs. You you could never see it in the VHS version. You could just about see it in, just about see it in DVD. Now in Blu-ray, it's like, oh, I can even see where, like, there was, you know, you can see some of the loose pencil artwork that was picked up when they Xeroxed it. That's how... See, and those are the things it. that I can't... And again, I don't want to get too deep into it because I don't want to... <laughs> get into that part but i don't want to i i just i could I, I how do i want to express this without giving too much away you're you're right the imperfections are what because people always go to me when i talk about like because i do a show called 4k for you which is actually where i talk about uh movies on blu-ray and dvd and how transfers are done and all that kind of stuff and i can tell just by looking at certain things sometimes how if it's actually a negative or plausibly a negative yeah if what has been done to it digitally um because uh, there's people pointing out like i'm gonna tell you guys right now every movie you have has had something done to it digitally one way or another every yep. movie sometimes it's necessary necessary the right people the right technicians can find the right balance on certain things because yes when you scan something raw sometimes you're going to get a lot of of noise that that you can't deal with in a digital realm like watching it on a digital picture that yeah. doesn't show up normally so you'll have to balance that with certain things right and and i'm not trying to toot my own horn here but i even had gary tunnicliffe who's a uh, one of our <laughs> illustrious guests from time to time we got into a little debate he's like you can't tell the difference between cgi and real world i'm like try me after about three emails back and forth of him sending images and me guessing he quit <laughs> <laughs> he didn't tell me if i won or not so i'm guessing i won because <laughs> he's like nobody can do that i'm like i can <laughs> It's like, because I know the imperfections to look for. Yeah. That's just it, James. You brought up the point. And that's the thing is I'm noticing the imperfections I could have never noticed before. Even in that 2003 one you have up there at the top, there's things I'm seeing in number four at the bottom that I wouldn't normally see. But I don't want to dwell on that part too much. Yeah. What I do want to bring up is that we did get a trailer. See, this is the thing. We've been sitting on this for a while. We knew this was coming. But we couldn't we couldn't really talk about it. You've been teasing that something's coming, but you haven't even been able to say exactly until now. Probably, I'm well, assuming. Also, like, uh, so. like my ignorance is, I wasn't even sure. People, uh, I was going through my tweets of the last couple of weeks. I'm terrible when it comes to Twitter. I'm always like a week or two behind. And people were saying like, "When's it coming out?" And I said, "Either later this year or early next year." I, like, I think the trailer says maybe 2022, but I I, I don't want to confirm anything. I'm just going to go. It's going to come at some point. Yeah, and that's Germany. why we had to sit on it too. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously, you know, understandably, you're going to get people frustrated. And I could, you know, this is a slight tangent, but people are going to say, why Amer Why is it not being released in America? And it's like, well, one, this bunk, this German company decided, let's make, a, let's make it on Blu-ray. They could have half-assed it easily and just gone, we'll take these Hallmark Masters or whatever and just put them on, put them on Blu-rays and like, yeah, just bundle them. That's they what they did, did the last time because this is the second German yeah. Blu-ray and the first one was just that. Yeah, that was, uh, that to, was yeah. just the, uh, the, uh, the digital masters, which were a bunch of crap, compressed as hell and without the English audio tracks, so oh. they weren't even English friendly. Because I, I remember for a while I toyed with getting that set, not because I thought, oh, the episode's going to look great, but I thought, um, they, they may look the best they can, but then I started thinking, oh, what if they've got the wrong bloody masters from classic media? Or, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want to go down that road again. I thought, I'm not going to spend a load of money. Um, so, yeah, with, with you know, these ones that come out, this German company were like, well, we're going to do our best. And this is the thing, like, I, hope, I really hope people appreciate the level of work they've gone to. They could have, even then, after upscaling it, they could have upscaled the episode and gone, done. They came to me and they said, you know, I said, I said, oh, 
you know, the dork in me, huge dork, the huge dork in me wants to, wants to restore the original Filmation logo. So the first 18 episodes of He-Man produced, uh, episodes of He-Man produced, not, not in the sense of like the first 18, but the first 18 that number jump all over the place, had this different Filmation logo. It looked like ding, 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 ding. The little bit older blue. school one, yeah. It was blue and pink and I think maybe a little yeah. bit orange in there. What happened over the years of, you know, this, that and the other is, I think, and even during the Hallmark process, that logo kind of vanished, as in it just got replaced. And I think also when, I think when Formation were, you know, producing the series or whatever, they would probably go after, well, oh, let's start putting the rainbow logo on every, you know, the more common one. So I think there's different versions of episodes flying about. Yeah, this is this is the 1986 logo. So this was only ever. Okay, seen so on... this is the older one or the newer well, one. No, this, I mean, sorry. Yeah, this was. So this logo pops Let me up. Let see. On, um... I know which one I'm looking for here. Yeah, blue and it. pink. It's like. Uh, okay, here it is. I think I got it. Maybe. <laughs> you would know better than me that's the problem uh but no like because you're right and i think the reason also is like you're talking is uh when they do these for syndication too i think a lot of time they yeah. would just slap them together and they would just use whatever the logo is this is like the the really old one isn't it oh that's that that looks like a bit of fan art that someone's done where they've taken the original old logo and then yeah it like the 1984 Four logo or three logo? That's, that's yeah, weird. I'm trying to find it. I know the one you're talking about, but I can't find it here. But that's yeah, it's right. a little bit harder yes. one to find. Sorry, kids. It, that's all right. It's, <laughs> it's, yes, yes. <laughs> let you down. But it's um, yeah, this blue and pink logo. So I said to them, you know, I thought they would say, "No, nah, we're not, we're not going to bother with that." I said, you know, here's what you need to do if you want to do it. And they said, "Yeah, we'll do that." And they did it within a day. They said, "Right, you can, you can download the episode or the discs again." You'll find the episodes, you know, now have that logo tagged on the start and the end. Um, they replace some of the end credits. Bear in mind, the reason I know this, all this information, is because back in 1996 and 7, when I was putting that together, that old website, I had VHS tapes, I had TV broadcasts, and I was putting it all in this, you know, for the website. So it was like TV production differences. If I hadn't done that back in, back then, None of this would, none of this information would still be around. So I was pulling information myself that I'd written back in '97. Going, which episodes use the? Oh yeah, it's those sixteen plus those two. These are the rainbow logo that everybody recognizes. And then what had happened with the masters again, or the ones they had that, that, that upscaled, was that all the Shira second seeds just had the rainbow logo. And I was like, ah, oh, that's not right. I said it. They the. The, the the one you showed the uh, yeah. the orange the orange and pink logo with the very kind of scripted yeah, the, fonts um because that one when that pops up it's like little fireworks it's, it's really beautifully animated like and they um uh, again they said oh well, have you got it and it's like yes yeah. so i spoke to my friend dushan and he was like yeah i've got, I've got I've, i can provide you with a pal version send it off to them they upscaled that put it on the start and it was just like so they they went to lengths to make sure this series um to make sure this release was as accurate as possible to what it should be yeah and there's a few other things we had discussed that i don't know if you could get into too that they also got from you and and other things that made me giddy because it's things that we haven't seen or heard let's say probably oh, yeah. in a long time yeah so um we got so on the blu-ray um will be like the two so you got the you got the christmas special um you've got tv spec well, call it a tv special it was a vhs special but they also showed it in on september the 24th at the man's chinese theater the Elator's the, revenge is that the one no the greatest adventures of all was the first oh, that one. one yeah yeah which is the uh the kind of like the earliest episodes produced with like bumpers featuring the sorceress and they pulled that version from i own like a uh like an old uh what do they call it like a, a beta a beta tape of it so it's not the best quality yeah. but it's the best quality you're going to find of that and the same with Skeletor's Revenge. Um, all I had was the old VHS release, and I said, this is all I've got. Even though I, I own the beta of that, I've never been able to get it transferred. Every company I've taken it to, like, oh, we can't do this. Um, so the two specials are on there. The Christmas special is on there. The Secret of the Sword is on there. But not only that, it's the Secret of the Sword. Um, they they even managed to do the stereo track for it. So the Secret of the Sword, for the first time in digital format, in stereo did i say that right i think that was english it was all over the place yes but yes yeah, like the secret of the sword on on you know bci releases uk releases german releases before has always been 
uh, oh, no. basic mono, you know. But this is the first time it's like, oh wow, you listen to it like headphones, it's like, oh, it's like, wow, this is this is awesome. This is how I remember seeing it, you know. And um, what else? There's a few other things I'll talk to you about off air, <laughs> but uh, they've they've really gone. Oh yeah, so, I don't know if this is. I don't know if I'm supposed to reveal this, but basically, all the BCI documentaries are on there. So that's like twenty documentaries where they interview. You know, all these interviews from back in the day um, with Lou Scheimer and all those guys and stuff. Lou yeah. Scheimer, they were Dini, really Vitilio. good. There, they uh, they basically went like made several, but uh, the most important one once was was the one with all the writers because they divided up all of the all of the seasons into half a season and then they did like a retrospective of the episodes. yeah that's the ones they've included yeah it's really, like really good this i mean obviously the quality is you know whatever they could pull from those dvds i don't think you know there are technically any masters of those lying about so it's just like well we'll just kind of extrapolate that and shove those on dvd so in terms of preserving the quality of those documentaries probably not the best thing but they're there and the other thing is you've got all the audio commentaries that appeared on the bci sets so that's i forget how many and then they asked me to record a bunch of um, commentaries. So I was exhausted. I, I recorded Diamond Drive Disappearance, Teela's Quest, the episode Battle Cat. And I did S The Secret of the Sword, which was like the most epic. I've done episode commentaries on previous He-Man releases before, but this was an hour and a half of talking about He-Man and she -Ra. And funnily enough, I'm pretty good at waffling. So I was able to um, fill an hour and a half commentary talking about Secret of the Sword. But yeah, it's um, it's... It's a, a release that, you know, aside from the quality of these episodes, you know, there's other things like uh, one one little thing. This is probably going to people just won't care about some of them, whatever. There was an episode of she called Into the Dark Dimension, episode 39. And that had been produced, televised in America, released on VHS, aired over here in the UK. It always had an issue with the voices, the pitch of the voices that the music was all right in NTSC but the voices were always pitched. So when that episode was transferred into PAL, they sounded like chipmunks. I'm not joking. That, that, that episode is kind of hard to watch. It's a really bloody good episode. It's a Straczynski episode. What my friend Dushan did was like, give me the tracks and I'll try and pitch down the, you know, the audio um, or like get, not pitch down, but extend it to NTSC speed. So for the first time ever since probably Filmation even produced that episode. This episode has the correct audio for the first. So it's like even stuff like that. And I said, I said to the German company, I said, well, you know, we're thinking of restoring the audio for the. Send it over. Send it over, and we'll put it on. I was like, okay, I, I probably could have done anything to be honest. I'm like, here's an audio commentary track of me just going like waka 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 for 20 seconds, 20 minutes or something. They would have gone. We'll put that on as well. They were just so. The last company I ever worked with this well on He Man and Shira was um, Dark Horse. Dark Horse were fantastic company to work work with and uh Co Co media play on uh, obviously their rebranded name just yeah just a, a brilliant experience no egos no any of that just like tell us what to do i was like okay but you know it's a two-way thing so yeah just a really grand experience and i yeah like like i said before the um obviously people are going to comply i understand like why is it not released in america it's like you need to speak to universal or whoever and say and you know this is the thing my my one hope out of everything aside from this selling and you know doing well for the company is i hope that these masters or like digital masters as we've you know done our best with them is that these become the norm now is that these become the ones that will hopefully end up on a an eventual us blu-ray set or a uk blu-ray set or something these are the ones that i want to see i don't want to see field issues i don't want to see speed issues i want to see these episodes as we've got them to the point of you know i'm going to say near perfection you know what i mean it's like this is currently the best they can be so yeah i just i just hope that going forward this is how they will always be fingers crossed we can hope and Koch Media, uh, or currently Plyon, they certainly have some big backers behind them. Tom, do you know who owns them? Who's the owner of Plyon? Uh, not offhand, but I'm sure you could tell me. Yeah, I can. Uh, it ties back into a video we have to do. They're owned by the Embracer Group. The same people who own Lord of the Rings. And oh. a host of other gaming properties. So, uh, so uh, yeah, part of the massive, massive buyings, uh, Bree, that the Embracer Group did was Koch Media. 
and uh, with them, uh, Plyon. So no. there's a big corporation behind here. And we've already seen that the Embracer group is kind of playing ball with Amazon when it comes to Lord of the Rings. So maybe, maybe they'll continue to play ball with uh, with Universal when it comes That'd be to be so Game. nice. <laughs> well, I'm more worried about what Universal will do on the other end because here's the thing: is uh, I love the Germans in their Blu-ray mentality. They know how to do it right. Uh, yeah. We've got some other news coming out at some point we can't talk about yet still. And this is like a few things we've been sitting on for a while, and this is one of them. And I'm so excited because we do have a trailer. That was the thing is I was getting to the oh, fact that we have uh, a visual. Now we actually have uh, see it in motion. So this is about 20-some seconds. If you don't mind, we're going to show this real quick, James, and then we can actually discuss it more because this might actually even help you know what you can talk about a little bit. Uh, yeah. This was dropped the other day, I believe, or yesterday, wasn't it, Andre? Which one? Yesterday. That's why we're doing okay. this today. Because That's now what I thought. I couldn't there. remember. I couldn't remember if it was after our show Monday or yesterday afternoon, but, yeah, my days bleed into each other. It's because I'm on, like, Norwegian time. All right, here we go. And these don't even do that great of a representation compared to what just watching it in real live time on your own YouTube, right? Like it's it's astounding how good this looks. I but that trailer, I, I can understand if people go, "Oh, is that it?" But if you like. I, I said to um, play on, I was like, do you mind if I do my own kind of like teaser image trailer? And they were like, yeah, just kind of run it by us first. I was like, yeah, I, I, I think I can do that because, you know, what they show there, the He-Man Beast Man shot is probably the best, but it is yeah. astoundingly good. And bear in mind, that's obviously, you know, people are watching just a this little taste via an encode, via a YouTube video, you know, as we know, YouTube, you know, de de degrades images and stuff like that. So, it's it's in this case it's a source resource resource all i can say is when you look at these blu-ray images um it's just like it's uh, the transformation sequence i was like oh wow that's the level of detail i watched i've got like a nice big telly over there and i played it on that the other day for the first time i hadn't even i'd been looking at my blu-rays on my laptop constantly i thought let me just try on a big telly you know and see if it really does it just i was like oh it's yeah, it's doing it a lot of justice. It was just incredible. Like, I watched the dragon invasion and diamond drive disappearance. And it's just like, I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. But it was just so good to see these episodes that I know so much about in terms of how they were put together, who worked on certain scenes, to see them in, like, vibrant and just the detail. It's so, like, yes, finally. <laughs> you know? And I've, I've dealt with so many quality differences over the years. You know, back in... I've shown a few images. You know, there was there was one time when all the she receives in two episodes were nigh on unwatchable. But at the time, you took what you did, and you're like, oh, these are great. And you could still see what was going on, but you compare them to the Blu-ray, and it's like, or you compare them to a DVD, and it's just like, wow, how were we living with this? But at the time, you were, you know, grabbing what you could when you were collecting these episodes. It was like this girl who turned up and said, oh, yeah. I've got the second season of she -Ra. It's like, please well, send them to us. And it was just like, oh, God. But still, we got them. <laughs> and I'm glad you did on your on your Twitter thread. So, yeah, if you guys, I don't know if you want to share your, your Twitter name in the chat. I think it's Serial Geek TV, isn't it? Oh, so uh, I've Twitter already put it is... in the description. Okay, so we got it. Yeah, yeah you've, been, you've been posting all kinds of images, and I love that you've also posted images from, like, VHSs and stuff oh, like yeah, that to yeah. just see the various, like, because that kind of shows, especially, like, younger people who were not around yeah. during the transition. You guys got to remember, what it, like, now I'll dump on DVD a little bit here and there, but I won't nearly dump on it as much as I will some other things because I remember the first time popping into DVD. Oh, and seeing the difference, that was mine. right? Like, it's just like, it was a whole new world. And then the same feeling the first time I saw something in high definition, it was like, I'm actually seeing something the way it looks in the theater. I'm like, this is, this is insane. Cause you know, that's why I loved going to see a movie as many times as I could in the theater. Cause I just knew it was never going to look the same after that. It's never be quite as good. Even my friends who had laser displays and stuff. Yeah, it's, it looks good, but it's not still just not quite as good as it is in the theater. <laughs> and as a younger person, I couldn't quite put my finger on it. It wasn't until I got older and got into production and went to school for it. And I actually started learning about how film and all that kind of shit works. But like, that, see, that's the big thing here is like seeing these images, even if these are up converts, I don't care because the versions that Andre sent me, right? I think five, what, 570 
P or something like that. Five seventy six P because these are the, these are the the lustless. Uh, so just self- slightly over DVD quality. quality. They would be five seventy six P. In in image uh, in image. And vibrant. the difference between those and the standard DVDs is is even a leap. So I guess yeah. I could see to a point where they're pulling it, but it, even if we have some episodes, I don't care how it's done. Just from what I've seen, and I can't wait to see what you pull together because I want to see more of this emotion because this looks amazing. I am giddy for this, like a schoolgirl. It's I know crazy. It sounds silly, like I, I, I think I've I told the story recently. I did like a little little story of like you know the quest is over as it were for now, <laughs> but it was the the, the right? way that you know I I did I you start with VHS and then DVDs come out and you work your way through that and you get different levels of quality and you get to a point of this where it's just like, I feel like, I feel like this is what I've been waiting for for years. Um, uh, and just, yeah, just kind of finally seeing as it was meant to be seen. And you get people obviously say, oh, I kind of prefer the VHS quality. It's like, that, that's fine. That's, that's great. But I want to look at those lush filmation backgrounds and see the little details or, or look at a crowd shot in an episode of she and go, Oh yeah, there's all the cameos that nobody was supposed to pick up but us, you know, but us in the future. <laughs> and it's um, yeah, it's it's so funny to to look back at this journey and just you know go through it and see all these you know different versions. And and there was honestly there was a point about a year or two ago where I thought all the best quality I'm ever going to have are the first season that was released in the UK and the the Australian Mad Men. DVD, Madman DVD releases, they were they were really good. He Man and She, and I thought well, that's the best I'm ever going to get. When this started happening, when I you know like so the other month saw these episodes in all their glory, I was like, oh, this this is kind of this is it. This is what I've been really hoping would happen. And it sounds really melodramatic. It's like it's fucking He Man for Christ's sake. But no, but for, for us me, fans, it does mean no, that much. It's, it's it's animation to me. It's the preservation of anything like. There are probably cartoons that I couldn't give two hoots about, but you know, actually, this is a cartoon I care a lot about. But Galaxy High School, uh, produced by uh, Tokyo Movie Shincha, love that cartoon. Ran for thirteen episodes. It's one of the be- most beautiful looking cartoons of the eighties, but because it ran for thirteen episodes and <laughs> vanished without a trace, not many people remember it. It got a DVD release around about I think about two thousand. I want to say maybe ten, eleven, maybe a bit earlier, and they just they just half asked that. I mean, there are some things where it's really nice, but the amount of times where there's lots of stuff going on the screen, and because it's a Tokyo movie Shincha show, there's always stuff going on the screen. The amount of blocking you see on that. I used to work in DVD QC, so I would always flag this up. And I'm watching these, it's just like, it's, I mean, it's nice to see these episodes, but these in high def would look phenomenal. And I, I go through all these different shows in my brain, like Ninja Turtles, Transformers. And yeah, we had the Rhino releases yeah. that were full of errors, as we know. Um, all these different cartoons of the 80s. Um, yeah, the, the amount that could be accomplished. And I, I need to email this company and say, what other cartoons do you have? You know, <laughs> what, are you, what other shows are you thinking about doing? Because I'd love them to, you know, upscale or whatever, all these other shows and see what else yeah. they can do. Well, you keep bringing up Ninja Turtles, and of course, that's one right after my own heart. And as we're speaking here, this just to show you how much of a He-Man fan I am. This just came in the mail for me. I've got the the new Zor. Zor- oh, is that Zor Taylor? Yep. And then in this box is Whiplash. I have to open it yet, though. All oh, right. So, yeah. So, like, yeah. I mean, I'm that much of a fan still. That I mean, and and this show is a big part of that. And Andre and I have told our stories about the show a million times over, but. You know, it's just, it's one of those shows that I feel like it does. I mean, all these shows do, whether I like them or not. And that's one thing you and I and Andre talked about that day. And I've talked about with Robert Meyer Burnett and some other people is that film preservation and television show preservation is something we really need to talk about now, yesterday, two months ago, two years yeah. ago, 17, 20 years ago. It's the, every minute that is wasted, something is being lost and, and anything we can save. Right. It, it is another thing that's great because yeah. down the road, I mean, we we at first you may look at something like He-Man as, oh, it was just one of those things. It was a 30 minute commercial for toys. <laughs> but you, you mentioned Paul Denny <laughs> and all these other people that worked on it. Even DC Fontana wrote an episode or two. I can't remember how many. But yeah, like there's a lot of people that worked on this show that weren't just fly by night people trying to sell toys. 
that's a, that's what I love about the show is the people you speak to on it. Yeah, like Dini, Paul Dini for a while, not so much now, but he would look back and be like, oh, God, he man, that show. It's like, regardless of what you think about it now, you know you did your best work on it. As in, I don't mean his best work better than Batman animated series. I mean, when he was writing those scripts, he wasn't phoning it in. He was working his ass off to write great scripts, and he did. The same with like, you know, Larry Dottilio, Straczynski, Robert Lamb, I could go through a list, Michael Reeves. There's, there's a, they couldn't yeah. have done the stuff they did later, including Batman the Animated Series in uh, in, uh, in Dottilio's case, without having done He-Man first. Yeah, of course. And like, the, the you know, I've got, I've got Lamb. The funniest thing, like, the, you know, collecting animation art as I've done over the years was discovering certain things. Like I knew Bruce Tim had worked on Master Universe. He'd worked on the mini comics. I'd seen his name in the end credits of the cartoon. But he was only ever credited as like character design, I think. Maybe I'm correct, incorrect about that. But I, I got these fold animation folders, and I saw that that signature in 1983. There's that Bruce Tim, and I was like, oh, goes through. I was like, oh my god! And I found like I had about 20 folders that had layout artwork by Bruce Tim in. So it's Bruce Tim's He-Man artwork before he even worked on the mini comics. And then I've got artwork that he did character designs post well kind of post mini comic work when he was working on the she-ra series so it's it's so funny like people you know my 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 thing and i'm always open like i, I you know i love kind of poking fun at he-man as well it's like it's called bloody he-man for goodness sake but i love it as simple as that I, i'm not going to apologize for that Absolutely. but it's the fact that these people that worked on it were, were doing their best and, I, and I, that sounds almost patronizing but they would like you had artists that went to work for Disney, um, they say that Filmation, you know, supported the animation industry whilst all the animation work was going, which is fact, all the animation artwork was going over to overseas, to Japan, you know, all those countries. And the end results were looking rather nice. But had Filmation not kept all that animation work in the US, the, the animation industry would have had a hard time in 1995 when the Cartoon Network, you know, did their whole kind of we're going with all these uh, Cartoon Network shorts. A lot of those people went on to that and into the, you know, Disney and Disney television animation. And um, one of my favorite things is when people always say, Formation were cheap. And it's like, you know that one of their episodes, one single episode of He-Man or She-Ra or Brave Star, costs more than a single episode of Real Ghostbusters that had more animation or a single episode of this show that had more animation because they were keeping all the keeping it all in america because they wanted to support the animation industry and in effect filmation were their own worst enemy in that sense if they had shipped all the work off to japan which they did with the zorro cartoon filmation probably would have survived to 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 some degree they would have, they would have yeah. had a better turnover but the fact that they kept it all in house because they wanted to support and nurture the animation industry and it's crazy they hired writers who had little to no experience which sounds like what are you doing but you know i think dottilio was hired with very little i think he was uh writing rpg stuff at the time role-playing game stuff he'd been hired straczynski's first gig i believe was on he-man dini had written i think a few episodes of the cartoon version of shazam and uh, um, a few other things but he went on to you know going to he-man so many of the writers and people in the animation industry got their start in filmation and it's like it, it you know it's funny to look back and just be like yeah that's that's why i think these cartoons he-man she-ra filmation shows mm -hmm. ninja turtles transformers whatever they all yeah. need to be preserved because i agree you know without them there's an entire generation of pop culture that doesn't exist well and you have guys like lou scheimer who are just not talked about enough like that's a guy who uh who who is like quintessentially what every person should aspire to be, even when he got screwed over by Columbia in the whole Ghostbuster situation. Yeah. I mean, he still, you know, he, he answered in his own way, but it doesn't matter. In the end of the day, he kept things in America because he was a family first kind of person. He was an American yeah. first kind of person. I mean, that's why he, man, I think to me personally, I gravitated tw towards that a little bit more than GI Joe and transformers, which don't get me wrong. We're great. And especially oh. transformers yeah, had a lot of great lore, but there was still just a little bit more of that we're selling toys here aspect to those to me than He-Man to where yeah. He-Man almost felt a lot like Ninja Turtles, and I'll get why, 
almost like separate in a way like yeah it, it's 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 it, it's part of the toy but it's its own thing at the same time and ninja turtles had that because because gary wolf i think it was who who oversaw ninja turtles he, he he got the rights for the second season forward to where playmates had no involvement other than they would send us toy designs and they would design things off the show but we didn't have to put in anything That's- like Exactly, like, and He Man felt like that. It didn't feel like oh, no, they were the, they were shoving thing. things in there just to say, "Hey, here's the new thing for Christmas, that, kids." That was the that was the thing that that Lou Scheimer, like, because he and Mattel had a really great relationship. And going into He Man, they'd obviously done the 1981 commercial, the Castle Grayskull commercial. If anybody's ever seen that, it's like the really crazily animated, beautifully animated, superbly detailed. It's um, gorgeous, yeah. Yeah, animation for this this. It's only like a short 30 second commercial, but it's it's gorgeous. Based like so, they he had a really good working relationship with Mattel. So when Mattel went in and said animated cartoon, Lou said, "I will do it." And I think this, this is like widely publicized knowledge, but he said, "I will do it so long as I have I can say which characters, you know, you can send whatever you want to me, and I'll say, yeah, yeah we'll include that. Yes, we want. Yeah, yes or no. Pretty That's much creative why, control. Uh, it's creative control. And I always say He Man was like one of the worst toy commercials ever. Like for those that accuse it of being a toy commercial, it's like you do realize. They only for 130 episodes. They literally advertised about, like, on average, about ten, seven or eight, ten toys. Because you always had. Let's have a look at the cast. So, Diamond Red Disappearance Stars. You can't. Orko's not a toy. Prince Adam's not a toy. King Randall, Queen Malena, not toys. But you've got He-Man. You know, Teela, Battle Cat, Beast Man, Skeletor, etc., etc. That's pretty much the main cast they use. You always had. Uh, Adam, He Man, Cringe Battle Cat, Man Arms, Teela, Orko. That was your main character list that would go across all episodes. And, you know, Lou Shine would be, who's this character? Oh, we want you to introduce Cobra Khan. It's like, okay. And if a, if a writer like Larry Dottilio got a taste for the characters, like, yeah, I, might, I might use this guy a little bit more. And the same with Webstore, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, Mechanic, Buzz Off. Yeah, we'll introduce those. Some of the villains yeah. and stuff too. Yeah, yeah. But they, they, they weren't overdone. And then, like, you'd get to the latest, like, the there's technically three seasons of He Man as. 1983, 65, and then you got 33, 1984, mm-hmm. 32, 1985, and those last that last season of 32, Lou was throwing all these characters, you know, uh, Roboto, Too Bad, uh, Ratlaw, the Snake Man, all these characters, and he was like, yeah, I'll, I'll work in whatever I want to work, and he, you know, Roboto makes one appearance, Too Bad makes yep. like three. I always look at Triclops. I loved Triclops as a right. kid. I thought it was a great action figure. Appears in like 10 episodes out of 130. What a great toy advert. You know, it's it's stuff yeah. like that that really gets overlooked. The easiest thing to say about He-Man is, that's ah, a toy advert. So it's based on toys. It's a terrible oh, advert for it. Whereas Transformers, as much as I love Transformers, I always say first season of Transformers, I adore. But if you look at those last three episodes of Transformers, the rebirth, that's one of the most blatant... Tr- adverts I've, toy adverts I've ever seen. That you could easily, you know, and I love Transformers. And the movie itself, yeah. Of course, it's like, why did you kill all these characters? Literally, because we were given the edict: these aren't, these are the old toys; these are the new ones. And then you get, like I say, the rebirth, the last three episodes of the American Transformers. You're introduced to, I think it's somewhere in the reach of like twenty characters, like the Headmasters, the Target Masters, probably like Power Masters. You got the Throttle Bots, and it's just like, oh my goodness, <laughs> you know that you could accuse of being a toy commercial. I think even David Wise, who was a writer on Ninja Turtles even said, "Yeah, you can't get away from that." When I had to introduce all these characters, what choice do I have? You have to literally do a roll call. So mm. you know, it's I, I understand the criticism He Man receives, um, and I will happily go like, "Yeah, whatever." You know, I, I, well, I, I've, I've always said I'll take on all criticism. <laughs> to wrap up that point, I mean, yeah. you you made the point basically there. Like a lot of the characters that became the most popular were ones that Filmation either created and or created their own versions of right like orco arguably was one of the most popular characters oh, yeah. and 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 one of probably the the beginning of you know yeah we had uh you know like the flintstones had their uh what's his name the great kazoo and some other ones like that before that but to me orco was that first one of like you had snarf and all those other characters later down the road orco is ground zero but he's the best of those and because of that there was their versions of those characters became like we didn't have a king randor figure before the filmation show yeah. like who wanted a king randor figure like that's my point is they made these characters likable they created more toys than they actually advertised in the end and that kind of became the the norm later on because it's funny because he-man existed because they had 
they had taken away that law that you couldn't make a show based on toys. And in fact, it kind of created the future of toys by yeah. make, saying you can create a TV show like this, a cartoon that could be a juggernaut to sell plastic. And a lot of those same people went on to Ninja Turtles. And I think that's why you and I and other people gravitate, gravitate towards those two properties the most, because yeah. they have a lot of the same pedigree behind them. But yeah, I agree with you 100%. We need to kind of wrap this up and move on. we got some Super Chats, some specifically for you, though. So oh. we'll have a little bit more to talk about <laughs> here, I'm nice. sure. But, <laughs> yeah, uh, and I mean, as far uh, as the rest, I don't know if you want to stick around for but yeah, we'll, we'll specifically grab yours first, just in case. Yeah. I'm looking at this on my phone, uh, so I can barely read friend, it. Uh, Mike, the Mexican we'll Island for you. Man, says for $19.99. <laughs> oh my God, this is fantastic. Welcome, hail shout out to the great Mr. Etoc. Great. I'm so, <laughs> so excited to buy this for my collection. This is going to be great. Thank you for your work. Oh, thank you for the lovely words. I mean, like, yeah, I really, really hope people enjoy yeah. this set, and I think they will. <laughs> Just real quick, Andre, because I mean, yeah. you said it earlier on, but I don't know if you if people realize what what exactly has James done for the He Man universe. Let's let's let people know a little bit. Well, uh, as we said in the uh, in the beginning here, like you went through it yourself, like you have written you have written books uh, of all yes. the episodes. I mean, you were instrumental in collecting them even before the books. As soon as there was an internet, you were there helping to collect all the episodes when there was, was no one else talking about it. So you were one of I the think very, thing, very think, early yeah. voices. Yeah, just uh, like and it And was... ever since then, you were also instrumental in the 2002 revival being as good as it was because the people running that recognized this guy. He knows this stuff better than we do. So we need to see to seek his expertise. Plus, you've been there for every single... Uh, later dvd uh release up until this blu-ray right now and also you've been hosting your webpage serial geek you've been hosting fan magazines oh, everything so. to basically keep the brand relevant when the brand owners were doing nothing yeah yep. and i knew most <laughs> of this of what andre just said but one thing i didn't know when we talked to james is how much he had to do with the the 2000 series I, that I like, wait is a minute. significant. What? <laughs> yeah, he started talking about that. I was just like, wait a minute. Whoa, you had stuff to do with that? <laughs> like, yeah. Because that, I as mean, we all agree as fans, is like, just take that and make it a movie. Like, <laughs> oh, God, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just take those first three episodes would be the, like, first three episodes of the 2002 cartoon. Yeah. There's your first live action movie right there. Pacing, everything. The structure Pretty of it. Much. Perfect. Yeah. I, I, tone I perfect. and all that. Yeah. And the less said about the Kevin Smith travesty, the better. Better. They let's just say I they can, did I not possibly reach out talk to you. about that publicly ever. <laughs> oh, no, I don't want to get into that because Kevin does not like me. We know that. Um, <laughs> but all right, Andre, Andre, you had another one ready for him. Go ahead. Yes, Sorry. Uh, next we have Doctor Coffin Nails, who says for five dollars, this filmation master of the universe Blu-ray is the best news I've heard in months. Thank you for making my day. Yeah, as was ours when we first learned about yeah. it. Oh, this, this, I mean, like, I, I just, I cannot stress how that German company play on of, of just, they didn't have to do all the work they've put into this or allow me to contribute and put the effort in. They could have gone, yeah, we'll just, what's the order of episodes? Yeah, cool. All right. Oh, you want to do, no, no, we ain't going to do that. We ain't going to do this. To the point where they just made so, they were so willing to make, the, the blu-rays the best they could be and that's like you, you know, so few companies would, well you, know, you can tell know. them it's our goal to sell them out of these yes yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm going to tell everybody about this now that i can talk about it i'm so happy i'm getting in high definition he-man for the first time <laughs> so yeah i'm excited as hell uh so what else we got here on yeah, then we have Mr. Trickle Trunks, who says for five Canadian dollars, the reason to restore cartoons like He-Man is the same reason you yeah. never burn books. Yeah. It's an important part of history with an impact Absolutely. on the future. That is exactly right. And then yeah. we have a question from, I'm going to do this in German in honor of the German release, Fick dich, <laughs> Alex Kurtzman. Midnight's Edge, does this include new adventures of He-Man? And then I know he also had a follow-up question. Will this be uh, English friendly? Um, I, I, so, yeah, so the first part, sadly, no new adventures. It's just the filmation shows. Um, I would love 
New Adventures of He-Man and the 2002 cartoon to see a Blu-ray release. But I don't know if that's in their plans anytime soon. Um, so yeah, just all 223 episodes of He-Man and She-Ra, the specials, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But um, what, uh, second question was second um, question, since this English is will be English friendly. English so, friendly. It's got, you know, it's got the English audio for every episode. It's got a sub English subtitles for every episode. Um, obviously, people are saying to me, like, is it going to have Italian? Is it going to have, like, Spanish? Is it going to have French? It's like, well, no, because... You know, Probably this is, not. But, no, uh, it's, it's a yeah. German market release. But, you know, obviously, if, if you speak English and, you know, or, or you know that, that, that version of the show, get it because you can enjoy the series as it, you know, as it was, you know. And also, <laughs> you are doing commentary tracks. How how's your German? Um, not very good. <laughs> so I'm assuming you're doing them in either English or <laughs> someone, someone or English. Yeah. Like, how, someone said to me like, "Are your commentaries commentaries in German?" I was like, "God, that would be awful if they were. I, like, I would sound terrible." <laughs> So yeah, no, because I would I can only imagine that your commentary track is going to be exactly as it is with an optional German subtitle track. Well, the other thing the as commentary. well, like just to, for for the German fans that might be uh, listening. So I guess there was a bunch of German He-Man and a bunch of German she episodes that were dubbed just by a different team of artists, of voice artists. So some of the some of the episodes have like German language one. German language to English. So there's, there's, I guess for the German fans, they get these uh, maybe lost audio. Tra I don't know enough about those previous. They are uh, thorough. Yeah, oh yeah, that's the thing. Like, yeah. <laughs> the Germans <laughs> the it... releases, they don't mess around. And this is why I, I think... was excited that a German company's doing this. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. No, no, absolutely. Like, I, I think the um, one of my favorite ones is the when you go to the audio for the Secret of the Sword, you've got you've got English. English stereo, German, another German version, uh, commentary with the filmation people from the BCI set, commentary with me. Nice. So it's like it's like six audio streams. So wow. like, what am I doing? <laughs> Andre, when this comes out, I'm gonna need a few days off. <laughs> yeah, well, I may need them too. So <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit. Uh, <laughs> then we have uh Mecca J. This is the final one that I can see. Uh, says James wanted to know if you've seen Midnight's Edge's He Man retrospective oh. videos, and if no, so, I, what did you think of them? Um, I, I, I think I said to you boys before, like, I, I kind of haven't seen those yet. I, I, I think I said to you, it's one of those things where sometimes when you're, you, you, you know, you're a fan of a channel or something, or you know, other channels, etc., and they do a video about a subject you're really kind of passionate about, you're like, I kind of, I'm a bit worried, I'm a bit not weary, but like worried to watch it. That sounds really strange, but it's just like I, I don't know. There's something about me that was a bit nervous about watching them. But I said, I, I said to the guys that um, I will check them out at some point. And I'm so like, I think you said you've watched some of our other exchange. stuff. But <laughs> you said you avoided the He-Man stuff, but I think you said you watched some of our other stuff, right? Oh yeah, no, I, I watched all your other videos. Like yeah, yeah, any yeah. kind of videos where you, uh, you know, videos. Um, I watched a lot of the yeah After Dark stuff and then I said, yeah, yeah. I, I, that's why I knew you guys before, and I was like. You guys know me. That's weird. Um, so yeah, that was uh, yeah. I I, uh, I have to go back and watch those at some point. And then, like I say, write a strongly worded email to you both and be like, "What are you guys thinking? This is a uh, you know, Revelations, the best He-Man cartoon. What are you guys thinking? You know, because I'm sure that was said, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, no. I, I I'm I'm not too worried about your response to seeing them. I th I think that you will be mostly pleasantly surprised. I know, it gives me something, uh, yeah. And there might even be some new revelations in there for you because we yeah. can take like, some things that has connections outside of He-Man, like ah. ties to later canon movies. But now like you're going to play a part stuff. in these videos. So, yeah. That's the weird thing because the, the thing, stuff yeah. that you've brought to the table mm -hmm. now adds to uh, the some of the next parts we're getting into because we're going to be getting into some of the nitty-gritty now. We've got Ooh. Now that we know that there are technically masters, we can put that to rest. But the other side of it is we got to get through this rights issue business. And uh. <laughs> that's something we can't get into here today. But yeah, that's uh, <laughs> you. I just love your reaction because you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, of course. It's like, oh, man, I just love the fact that the idea of using Hordak becomes like a really problematic thing. It's like we're going to use Hordak. It's like, can we use Hordak? Can we use Hordak? Can we use who, who can use Hordak? It's like you guys should know. But at some point, I don't know who made the decision. I don't know when the decision was made to have He-Man and She-Ra as separate properties. It's like, 
oh, you really, whoever made that decision really. Oh, we know that decision. We actually cover that. And I'm actually referring a little bit more to what happens next year with the rights and what's going on with Mattel and Universal and oh my gosh. That's a whole nother can of worms. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. The he the he man and she are right. So oh, you watch our videos. We cover that in detail. Exactly how, when, and who. I said so, to uh, um yeah. I said to Emiliano Santalucia a few years ago, I said, Do you know what? It's got to the <laughs> I said to him, it's got to the point where I think we should just walk around saying we own He Man and She Ra and then just let's go, do oh, it. Paperwork. <laughs> let's crowdfund this shit. Let's get let's just buy the rights at this point. <laughs> just be so good. Uh, it would um, be easier. We have we'll one start more question Motu here. Incorporated, yeah. <laughs> yeah, about this uh, <laughs> this uh, release. Uh, Dr. Coffin Nails, he wonders on behalf of all Americans. Yeah, we'll will be- this Blu-ray be region fee free? Or available in region A. Now, this uh, particular German release will never get a region A specific release. So the question is: Will this release? This is the reality of the question. Will it be region three Blu-ray or locked to region B? I don't. I don't know the answer to that. Unfortunately, I can. I, obviously, I can find out. So I will. Um, but I will say this, and please don't think I'm patronizing anybody around a Blu-ray player. But to my knowledge, as someone who's owned a couple of Blu-ray players over the years, every Blu-ray player is capable of pressing a few buttons if you look online and you can... I Yeah, I wouldn't that recommend it. That very no. much <laughs> on who's manufactured it. Yeah, here's my recommendation. Go on. Everybody who is a film lover, television lover, loves collecting physical media, do yourself a favor and invest in a region-free player. It will get rid of all these problems. You'll never have to worry about it. Uh, so if you pop something in and it just doesn't happen to be region free, guess what? You just pop it in your region player. That way you can watch whatever you need to whenever. Uh, the, they're usually no more expensive than any other player. I know it sucks to add another player to your to your you know already ever growing entertainment center sometimes, but uh, yeah, I see a few people are already saying it in the chat. If worse comes to worse, and there's other things that are coming that are always coming out from other countries that are. Yeah worth getting because that's the thing german i have a lot of german uh imports for that yeah, very reason yeah. uh they do some great work over there um and sometimes it's not even for the movie itself it's sometimes just for the special features <laughs> like you'd be surprised uh but like no like uh that's my best uh uh suggestion on that but in the future we don't know maybe these will sell good enough and maybe we can create enough buzz that universal will get behind this and do their own version in the future <laughs> That's what I said. That's what I want. And I just, you know, I just hope that when they do that, they don't go, they don't half ass it. They look at those masters they've got and they go, this is how we're going to transfer them in code, whatever. They're not going to go, oh, we know how to do this. And then we end up with like worse masters again. It's at this point, these episodes, you know, are the best that they can be at the moment. So, you know, these are what they should be using. Don't start messing with this or I know what, and if you're going to mess with them know what you're doing and I think that's the thing that keeps concerning me um but yeah l- luckily even with uh, the universal release like I was contacted like I say very basically of like the episode is the episode order correct and is this you know this forward is that okay to use like yeah sure so I'm, I'm hoping that if there is some sort of universal release or whatever that they will reach out or someone says hey this British guy worked on the um, German set. He might be able to help us with this release. Or they may go, we know what we're doing. And then it's like, <laughs> we, I guess we'll, we'll find out. Time will tell. But for the moment, this this German uh, set is uh, is going to be pretty uh, definitive. There you go. The definitive set. Uh, Rob I mean, Bauer asks for $5. James, do you know when pre-orders will be available? What a fantastic show and one of the best interviews I have seen in a long time. Oh, thank you. Oh, bless you. Um, yeah, I think uh, I'm not 100 percent sure again. I'm really bad at this, but I, th- I I kept saying, oh, they're going to be for sale in 2023. But I think they're looking at pre-orders towards the end of this year. And granted, we're in what November already. Yeah, but the trailer I, said December. Yeah, I think oh, it said December. Yeah. <laughs> it's Andre knows. So, it's, um, yeah, well, my, ge- yeah, my German is loose at best, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, uh, I'm not a German speaker, but I am a native speaker of another Germanic language. So okay. there's enough similarity that I understand a good 70, 80% of German when I see it. 
uh, certainly in writing. But but anyway, yeah. So in the trailer, it said December two thousand twenty-two. So yes, I can so only I... imagine that uh, that's when you'll be able to pre-order it, and those pre-orders will be exclusively on the Plyon webpage. Now. We will, of course, give up-to-date information as soon as we know more about that, as well as the uh, the details about whether or not it will be region locked. Now, I've checked some of Koch Media's past uh, past output, and it's a little bit case by case basis. Some mm -hmm. of their past releases have been region free. Others have been region locked. I think it all but depends. The region locked ones, the region locked ones, have been the ones that were always going to be region locked. Yes, they were big releases that were released anyway all over the world. That is not the case here. And no. my experience with past such boutique releases is that these Germans, sneaky as they are, they know that for this thing there's an international audience. So yeah. unless we are required to put in a region lockout by the company we license this from, we're going to leave it region free. Yeah, Andre said most of what I was about to say. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I, I'll reiterate that and also just, I guess, add that a lot of times it has more to do with uh, legalities of things. Yeah. Um, funnily enough, I've seen more region locking just on special features than the actual movies themselves. Oh, wow. Like, for instance, like uh, almost every one of my imports of the 76 King Kong, I can watch the movie just fine because it was available in the U.S. So they can make that region free. The thing that wasn't was the special features. So I had <laughs> that was my first interaction with something like that. I was like, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> Yeah, there you <laughs> go. You've got the special features again. And, yes. and, and, and Turbine has the same issue with uh, their import of Texas Chainsaw Massacre since oh. I'm assuming Dark uh, Dark Sky, who released it here, used their same exact master. The, the movie disc is open, but the special discs, special features disc, which has differences on it, isn't. You see, that's the least <laughs> <reality>. <laughs> but, so, but anyway, the important thing is that a Blu-ray is going to come and for everyone in Europe you'll have no issue whatsoever but yeah. everyone in America with any luck you won't have any issues and for those that have a region free blu-ray player you definitely won't have any issues no. and on that note yummy bliss says for two dollars by the gods take my money <laughs> I need those blu well I'm making Andre order two just in case I can't get one over here oh, yeah, and no I'm gonna try no, and then um Here's the thing, guys. That's what I'm saying. If we make this a success, it will make Universal take notice. And I was going to yeah. say before, the best case scenario is not only would they just reuse whatever uh, these guys are doing. I keep wanting to call them Coke Media, but they're uh, Play On, play on Media. Yeah. yeah. Instead, they'll actually go, wait a minute. Do we have the masters? And go back and re-scan them. Yeah. You never know. That's, <laughs> that that's, wouldn't that's be the, the first time. Because there yeah. have been examples of other at times when the Germans have made a really special Blu-ray release and then suddenly everyone else has been like, uh, I want that one. Like, for instance, the extended version of Reanimator started out with the German release and made its way from there to everywhere else. But it was the Germans that made that happen. Yeah, and Dr. Coffinale's like, I'm just going to get a region free player. Hey, man, there's some great ones. Like, I, like if you like The Punisher, the Dolph Lundgren import is great. Well, uh, that's Mario also Talk Media, by the way. Yeah, Mario Brothers. There's the one that's out now, I think, is region free, but the before that, the one that has the better soundtrack and some differences to it is uh region locked. There's some other ones that are region locked. Um, I think even like my uh recent import of uh luckily I think everything's on the 4K, but so most things on 4K are region free, luckily. But like I think my my uh Red Sonia Blu-ray is locked, but the 4K isn't, for instance. So like, go yeah, figure on that. I how that works. Uh, and then final one of uh, he man's and then we're going to get to all of the other super chats yes. here. Uh, Ryan Ra Reagan says for ten dollars, I'm not going to lie. Kevin Smith cut me deep with revelations. My stomach just dropped, and I never even finished it. And the good I don't news think a is, lot of I people did. You, Netflix are very, very well aware of that. They have the data to to see exactly what happened with it, so they know. They know. Which is funny because I heard. <laughs> I don't know how somebody reached out to me and told me because I'm sure because I knew my connection with this whole thing that they're going to pull a, a little bit of a they're going to try and pull a little bit of a Star Trek and this season it's going to be more about He-Man kids. 
bullshit on us and it's not going to be again watch yeah we can we can only hope i yeah i've lost all hope in that but i I know you can't speak on it too much james anywhere you choose not to which is respect i respect that so yeah yeah and i always say to people like you know and and this isn't me you know playing it safe or anything but i always say look i i often tell people my he-man and she-ra happened in the 80s and like that's no disrespect to like new adventures or the 2002 cartoon or revelation or cgi but i'm so happy with what i grew up with because i i still think it's phenomenal it was, it was escapism it was uh you could build worlds in your imagination with your little action figures um i don't know if i've ever told you guys that like on one of the documentaries um i was on i think it was the power of grayscale one i um i sent them audio clips which i still had of me playing with my action figures stuff like that like you can't get rid of those memories and like unfortunately like, some generations won't really have that going forward but i'm, I'm so happy that masters yeah. of the universe gave me so much kind of a uh, very early age you know it's just um yeah very special time to uh uh be it be appreciative of the animation world absolutely uh and uh, with that we have gone through yeah. all of the he-man chats so we have many more super chats of uh, all the other topics uh, James, you are very happy to to stay on as we go through the through the rest of them. Uh, or if they may get into topics, you may not me. want to uh, comment on those. So. Oh, no, 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 very. <laughs> There's that too. I watched, I watched the opening and I, was, yeah. I watched the, the episode okay. before I so I was very interested. But I may head okay. off because I'm I'm really hungry. I didn't have any dinner. Yeah. no that's awesome and hopefully we get to talk to you some more hopefully we can maybe work up some work out some things with the guys over at play on and oh. maybe talk to them in the near future too fingers crossed but yeah guys this is something i've been sitting on for a while and i'm so excited that we finally got to talk to james and hopefully he'll be returning in the future in other capacities not just he-man but even some more he-man stuff so our he-man fans are happy to hear about that but yes thank can you just, so much please can I just do a cheap plug before i go Go for it. Absolutely. Um, so I, I just like started a YouTube channel which celebrates all things He-Man, She-Ra, Inspector Gadget, Hulk, Spider-Man, His Amazing Friends, Transformers, Dungeons and Dragons, etc. Um, so yeah, if, I'm Serial Geek TV. Um, I've just started that YouTube channel, so please head over and watch some videos. Um, you know, just because I think they're quite good. <laughs> he says arrogantly. <laughs> Yeah, no, good. Uh, go check it out. Link is also in the description, as is the link to to your Twitter. Uh, with that, I want to say thank you for joining us. It's uh, been a blast guys. talking to you, getting to getting to know you, and uh, also on behalf of He Man fans everywhere, thank you for your work curating the brand when the brand owner. Yes, wouldn't. it was uh, no, Thank you for having me on and everything, guys. And. Yeah, together we can we can celebrate and keep this stuff alive. That's uh, that's our goal, I think, as fans. It's all, it's all uh, anyone yeah. can ever ask. But uh, yeah, I'll check out now. Um, thank you again, and I shall. Thank um, you again, James. Yeah, speak to you soon. All yes. right, take care. Bye.